So let's talk a little bit about risk, because I think you know we've we've sort of skirted over the top of it a little bit. I'd be curious to know whether the approaches everybody recommended here. Let's let's take the fit patient, not necessarily the unfit patient. The fit patient who may have high risk disease. How do how do you all define those things? Because I think that's really important from a day to day practice perspective. And how do you manage those patients? Who wants to start? Morning. Well, uh, high risk disease for me would be plasma cell leukemia. Okay. Uh, elevated LDH at presentation, and then fundamentally, the majority are classified based on fish genetics. Mm -hmm. And so it's 414 translocation, 1416 translocation, minus 17p, the changes in chromosome 1. And then now there's this new question being raised about what about 1114? Is 1114 a neutral? or is it intermediate, or as some of the German data suggest, is it profoundly bad? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to do with 1114 right now, but for the remaining, the genetics, LDH, and circulating cells, we consider that a very different population of patients. So, Maury, let me ask you this, because this is something that comes up whenever I see new consults, and that's the fish that's done, and, and maybe Raphael can speak to this as well, is not done on plasma cells. It's done on 200 random cells in the bone marrow. Oh, well, How yeah. do you know that that's happening? Because I'll tell you, in Compass, which is a large study of 1,000 newly diagnosed myeloma patients, there is significant discordance between what we're getting by sequencing and what's being reported from the sites by fish, because half the sites are not doing selected fish. So, well, thank you. I, I, I will tell our colleagues, you must insist that fish has to be done with either cell sorting or concomitant marking with uh, SIG. Uh, people should remember that cells that go out for fish analysis is usually a third aspirate of the bone marrow, which, by the way, <laughs> is already very dilute. Right. You've all seen that your flow cytometry shows 1%, while your bone marrow shows 30% plasma cytosis. So you're scoring 99% normal cells. That's uh, clearly something that the cutoffs that we have for fish are not going to work. So it's, really, really important that people do that. The same applies for people who are doing gene expression profiling. Mm -hmm. You have to do it on sorted cells. You have to get a high quality sample. Um, the other big challenge we have right now, and I'm sure some of you have experienced this, are uh, referring providers. Uh, if, if they don't get the right fish information because you know the laboratory didn't do it in the proper way, we really are stuck because by the time we see a patient for a consult for transplant after three cycles, Remission. guess what? I cannot tell if there's plasma right. cells, what the fish status is for the patient. Right. So if you're 54 and I'm doing that consult and I'm thinking, this person needs risk-adapted maintenance therapy post-transplant, how do I go about doing that? Sometimes it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Jayton, do you want to no, tell us your approach uh, in the deep south? No, it's very similar to what you do, so it's not. So. Okay. Heather? I think the other thing that oh, we, we think about is biologically, um, we're talking about fish and gene expression profiling, but it also makes sense that in the patient who has uh, rapidly progressive disease and, mm -hmm. and organ damage, which, which don't necessarily always correlate with the high-risk cytogenetic markers, right. those patients also need combination therapy, obviously, mm -hmm. as we talked about. Okay. Nooper, anything to add? Uh, well, no, nothing more to add, but, you know, risk is not just genetic risk, as Heather's pointed out. There's uh, the, you present with complications, so renal failure, bone disease uh, is a problem in certain patients, and they need, it to, be, they need to be treated fairly aggressively uh, and such. And frailty, age of patient, all of those things play into uh, making decisions, I think. So, Dr. Okay. Lonio, one more. I mean, I think Dr. Gertz went over some of the definitions of high risk right. of fish and cytogenetics and LDH and plasma cell leukemia. I think a couple other points would be extramedullary disease mm -hmm. um, that can be potentially seen on PET scan, um, and then uh, gene expression profiling either by um, the signal genetics mm -hmm. or um, the Sky 92 potentially in the okay. future. I think will be important as well to look at. So. Okay. Uh, you know, just to add a, one very quick comment. I think risk stratification by genetics is still very important for two reasons. First of all, we talked about myeloma being a chronic disease, and while you, uh, you know, a patient that has a minus 17 can become a chronic disease, it's very unlikely. We, we need better solutions for patients with more aggressive disease. So how we talk about patients regarding expectations and prognosis certainly has a hue, at least for me, in how I talk to them based on risk. And the second one, and we probably will talk more about this later when we talk about the, the clinical trials, is this issue of 
post-transplant therapy based on risk. And I mm -hmm. think that's turning out to be perhaps more important than the pre-transplant therapy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you all know, there is in the works, and it may be in press very soon, the revised staging system that no longer uses just beta-2 and albumin, but is beginning to incorporate things like LDH, as you brought up, 17P deletion, 414 translocation, which I think allows us to sort of mix the old and the new together to come up with something that's practical for people to use, but is easy to obtain uh, and has meaningful differences. Regarding what Raphael uh, alluded to, there was one very important presentation from the German group uh, that used bortezomib consolidation versus observation. And they demonstrated highly significant improvements in progression-free survival and depth of patient's uh, response. And so this issue about not only induction, but the question of consolidation and maintenance become relevant in the global management of these patients. And from this trial, which was over 200 patients uh, accrued, consolidation was very, very important mm -hmm. in improving outcomes.